I'm Gary, a Hoosier woodworker, and welcome to my shop. When I set up my shop, I had several goals I wanted to accomplish. One was to teach others woodworking, hence the video you're watching. Another is to donate my skills as a woodworker. This is how the donation boxes made in this episode came into play. I was able to donate my time and materials to make these for a nonprofit animal shelter. I drew up the plans so they could be built as inexpensively as possible. For example, I used a nail as a hinge, an eye bolt as hasp. I'll cover how I did this later on the video, but for now, let's begin the cutting process. I'm stack cutting these four at a time so that it's faster to cut. Used blue painter's tape to Mark out the location for the front window that was requested by my customer. Blue painter's tape not only holds these together, but it allows the lubrication on the blade so that these do not burn. This is the side of the donation box. It will need to have a rabbit cut in it to hold the plexiglass. To do so, I've attached a sacrificial fence to my regular fence and move the blade over just barely touching the sacrificial fence. Then I will take the side and simply push it through the table saw using the gripper for safety. This will give me a little notch or rabbit along the edge that will safely hold the plexiglass in and will not require any adhesives to hold the plexiglass. Got the two sides here, making sure that the groove that's for the plexiglass will fit on the inside and up. Apply glue. Now I don't want to get so much glue on this that it's going to go into the groove, but I want to still get enough that it will hold. Now I grab the front end and put the front carefully on this, lining it, allowing this other other side to hold it up. Once it's aligned, I want to nail it, making sure I do not drive the nails through the rabbit. Grab it back and make sure there's glue on the back. I don't have to worry about any rabbit on the back. And grab the back piece. Put the bad part of the back piece inside the case where it's not going to show. Line it up. And there, go. And there we have it. And you can see right there that. We have the grooves for the plexiglass, which will just slide down the front here. After filling the holes, I take it to the sander and do a light sanding. I've attached the bottom and made a little oversize. I'll trim it flush using the flush trim router bit. To drill the hole for the nail that will act as a hinge, I must do it on a drill press and must do it very slowly because I'm drilling a hole in a very thin piece of wood and I don't want it popping out either side. So therefore I need to make sure that this is really centered and go very slowly. To install the back, I'm going to use a nail as a hinge. So here is the back. I'm going to take the back and put it in. I use business cards to center the back. I'm 
Now I'll take a power drill and drill through the hole into the back plate. And here we have a two penny nail. It's a finished nail. Just simply slide it in there. And we may have to tap it home just slightly, but we don't want to do too much tapping because we could split the wood. Turn it around. Likewise on the other side. And so therefore we have glue applied to both sides. And now we have the access door that's being pivoted on those two two penny nails. The top has a slot cut in it for the money to be put in and is attached to the donation box and any holes are filled and sanded. I put a coat of painter's tape over the plexiglass to protect it from later finishes. I have painted the top where the slot was and also attach the sticker. So now it's time to work on the back. I want to use two eye bolts for the padlocks. However, the eye bolt is a little too long, so I need to cut off the back of it. I've threaded the nut on it so that when I do cut this off, I can back the thread out and that will recut the threads and allow me to put the nut back on. So the two eye bolts are installed and you can see how the back access panel works and the padlock just goes through the eye bolts. Now it's time to put on a protective finish and I'll be done. So I did make 20 of them. It was a lot of work but it was also a lot of fun and I did learn a lot. I hope you learned a few tricks from this video. Feel free to subscribe as I'm planning more videos in the future. A lot of them will be centered around the scroll saw. Now as I was making the last box, I noticed that I had mounted the back side upside down. Now the funny thing is I didn't see this until I would taken the picture, put it on the computer and realized, uh oh, the box had the back mounted upside down. Fortunately the glue had not set and I was able to turn it right side up. So in this case you can see that even after making 20 of them, practice did not make perfect. May God bless you all, and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon.